In this video, I'm going to assemble the DS3231 a Big Digit Dot Matrix Alarm Clock from Banggood.com. This is an SMD kit with very small parts. It's not one for beginners, but man, it sure looks cool. Watch. Okay, I received another package in the mail. This one came from banggood.com. And this one here is a little project kit. And uh, I've got a few of them coming from them, so I don't really know which one this is. Let's just open this one up and uh, take a look at what goodies I received today. Well, okay, we have a bag full of parts. We have a bag full of SMD parts. This is an SMD kit. We have a bunch of SMD parts here. These are actually light emitting diodes. We have a ton of these things. What this is, here's our case for it. Here's our circuit board, one side of our circuit board. Here's the other side of our circuit board. That kind of goes over there like that. When it's all said and done, you guys have any idea what this is yet? This is a dot matrix clock. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach all of these LEDs that are in this strip to this side of the board. This forms our dot matrix. And on this side, we have the components. So this should be a fairly straightforward little kit to do here. And uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of talking throughout this, this video. It's going to be mostly assembling. Um, these things do not come with instruction manuals when you order one. You have to go online and download the instructions. But you know what? Saying that, the instructions, I think, are probably some of the best that I've seen very clearly laid out with pictures as to what you need to do to assemble the unit twelve pages and well, that's how it ends up looking when it's done. So, hopefully this is going to work. Let's get the... Uh, go back to page number one here. I'm going to start by getting the LEDs prepped, identifying which way they go in, and then we'll start working on installing all of the LEDs. Now, again, I'm going to be quiet in a lot of this video because I'm going to speed it up, so there's no point in me talking. I'm going to film the, the whole process of this but a good portion of the build where I'm not speaking to you is going to be sped up so you can see it getting put together in time-lapse manner so saying that I'm going to start the build and no you're not seeing an optical illusion here this is actually my light shining through my magnifying glass I've got my bright studio light on over top here so that I can see what I'm doing with these small parts here. It makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm what I'm up against. Also allows the camera to work with a smaller iris so that it tends to stay in focus a little bit easier. Uh, what we have to do is we have to note, identify the first pin. And if we look down at the, the traces here, you'll notice that one is a slightly different shape than the others. Right, that one, that one, that one. What we're going to do is we're going to start by just putting a little bit of solder on each of those pins. That way we have a starting point to tack down the LED. So the first step is just to tack each one of those. And I've got my iron turned down to a relatively low temperature of only uh, 300 and I think I'm at 320 degrees Celsius. Because SMD parts 
are, are easily damaged by excessive heat. So I'm going to uh, just tack down and I'm going to do the entire board and I'm just going to tack down a bit of solder on each of these pins and then I can start mounting the LEDs. So in total, it'll be 105 LED. So therefore, I've now got the the uh, board prepped, so I can start installing the LEDs. Now this is this is the first of four uh, digital clocks that I'm going to be assembling in the next little while, and I'm going to build them all on camera. This is the dot matrix that Banggood has sent me, and I'm I'm hoping that this will be the start of of many projects. Uh, I did their power supply. Uh, variable power supply kit there uh, a, a couple weeks ago and that was a great success um, this is the second one I have another one sitting here to build as well and it actually is a propeller clock it's another SMD kit but I hope to be doing several more of their projects for them uh, going forward but the other two clock kits that I'm gonna to uh, be building in the coming weeks when they arrive I'm, I'm waiting for them right now they have been ordered one of them is a Numatron and for those that are that are unfamiliar with what a Numatron is, it's a seven segment display, but the segments are made up of incandescent filament, so it operates at low voltage. It was Numatron were around in the 1960s before LEDs and before vacuum fluorescent displays became popular. So it's an old technology, but very cool. And I haven't seen a Numatron display in a long time and I came across a Numatron clock kit so I, I just had to build one and the other one that I'm that I've got on order that's coming from the UK is actually a, a six tube Nixie clock with real Nixie tubes vintage Nixie tubes and I'm I've always wanted a Nixie clock but I it was hard to justify some of the ridiculous prices that some of the uh, that some of the uh, companies offering the kits for sale were asking I, I was going to buy one from Ramsey which was a, a, a better price and um, I snoozed and I lost I saw it sitting there and I was I was waiting for the Canadian dollar to improve a bit and uh, as our dollar was getting closer to par there a couple of years ago and I was ready to pounce and I was just waiting because I knew the dollar was getting, you know, was becoming more valuable. And uh, when I finally went to order it, I went to what Ramsey Electronics site only to find out that they no longer sell kits. They bowed out. So I have found one you know, over in the UK and it's en route now and I'll have that to go together real soon. But we'll start out with this one. This looks to be kind of cool. Dot Matrix digital clock this is actually a good size display it would be nice if it displayed seconds but it's just a four digit unit but uh, this will still be kind of cool a little cool project I'm looking forward to putting this together and uh, now that I've got the board prepped it's time to start mounting the LEDs so I got my instruction book out here I'm just taking a look here and uh, we'll start tacking the LEDs down so if we look down at the LED we'll notice that each one of these is a little dot on the board here which indicates where pin 1 goes right those pin 1 pin 1 pin 1 I've put the solder on I guess that's uh, probably pin 6 to tack it down but on the LED there's a little corner that's notched and that going to line up with pin number 1 so now I will start to mount the LEDs We'll start. I guess we'll start right here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the solder up until it flows and then just push the LED in place and let it tack down and then solder the other the other leads. So we first check to make sure our orientation is correct. To do that I'm going to use my magnifier so I can see what I'm doing because these parts are very small. And then we're just going to heat the solder up here to flow it and then just stick the LED in place like that 
That way I can line up the other pins, make sure that my alignment is correct, and then I can solder the other pins down. I've got to bring it over just a bit. I'm not quite dead centered. That's one down, 105 more, 104 more to go. Okay, one thing I've noticed, I pulled the LEDs back off here because uh, I was starting to install them and I was assuming that the notch on here is indicating pin number one, but it actually isn't, it's actually pin number six. And they go down here. Uh, the dot on the board here is not indicating pin number one. Well, it's not indicating the one that's marked with the flat side. It actually is indicating pin number one, but pin number one's opposite that. I measured the LED with a meter, and uh, um, they're backwards. If you put them in with the with the uh, with the uh, dot here on the board to the flat side of the LED to the dot, you're in backwards. It actually is the the the, the trace that we raised, the one that was not completely square, the rounded one. That one actually is the one that lines up with the edge of the LED. So I will start over and start mounting the LEDs again. I only got one installed and then I realized that perhaps it, the board was not marked the way that the LED, because these aren't marked and it doesn't tell you in the instructions, it doesn't tell you to put the flat side over here. Uh, that part was vague, but uh, I got out the meter and measured it and sure enough it was backwards. So We'll start over again down here and uh, get the LEDs mounted in the correct direction. Just like that. And then tack the other three leads down. And of course we can confirm this because if we look at our LED uh, on here. It's got the, the, the chart. It's got the schematic. It shows our cathode and our anode. So if I go to the anode here with my positive lead, you'll see that the lights light up. So that's the correct direction. So I will continue. And I'll, I'll film this, but I won't be talking to you guys as I go ahead and do this. Okay, this first row of 15 in. Only got this one. Six more, six more rows to go to get all these LEDs mounted in here. Um, it's going pretty, actually pretty, pretty smooth here. I've had a few that have bridged, and I've had to uh, use some wick to clear it up here. Um, but uh, installation is going really quite easy on this this unit, and I'm looking forward to getting the. Uh, all the rest of the components mounted and getting this thing working. The instructions have been very good. I mean, while they're they're not, it doesn't give you step by step, but what it doesn't, the only thing I found that it doesn't tell you is it doesn't tell you which orientation where the notch goes. And the pictures really aren't clear enough to determine uh, which one's which, which, so I had to measure the diodes with a, a meter to determine what the polarity, but other than that, it's been, uh, 
been uh, fairly straightforward here. So we're gonna continue and uh, we're gonna get the rest of the uh, LEDs installed. If you're gonna build one of these kits, do allow plenty of time because it is kind of fiddly to make sure you get the alignment correct. But they're not that difficult to do. Uh, at least these SMDs aren't so bad. Because you got one millimeter pin spacing. But some of the other types of SMDs are a little more difficult. The ones with half a millimeter spacing are a little bit more finicky. But as it is, I'm using a magnifying glass and I've also got on some uh, high power reading glasses, which I can't see further than about uh, a foot with them on. But it makes seeing these fine connections relatively easy. So what I'm doing now is rather than solder them dry and, uh, and then go back and, and add flux, I've just been putting some flux on the board ahead of time. It just makes the solder stick and flow that much easier. And it reduces the bridging too. Because it keeps the the workspace clean under the chip. It allows the solder to flow much easier.
I'm showing you guys this clip in real time just so you get an idea of how long it actually takes to mount these parts. Um, to build a kit like this, you're going to have to set aside a couple of hours at least. You know, if you're if you're a confident kit builder, you can probably put this together in a few hours. But it's it's a lot of fine soldering work, and uh, you don't want to rush it, right? Because that's when you make mistakes. I wouldn't recommend one of these for a novice. Stick with the through hole type uh, kit building if you're a novice. But overall, it's fairly straightforward to put this thing together. So again, I'm going to prime the board with uh, some liquid rosin because it, this just improves the soldering ability. It allows the solder to flow with much less heat required and much less effort. It also tends to um, minimize bridging. So I got three rows of uh, LEDs left to mount. And there you have it. Zoom the camera in a bit here so you guys can see how it looks. A little too close. There you have it. The top side of the board is now complete. 
I'm just going to go through this with my big magnifying glass and check for any bridges and then we'll start on the back side. Okay, the first part that we need to mount on the underside of the board is the USB uh, connector and we're going to use the outside two pins so the, the middle ones I'm going to lift them out of the way because we only use it for power. Now there, there are a couple little notches on the bottom here, little pins on the bottom of the connector as you can see right here and they line up with these little holes so when you line up the, the connector it will drop in place and that's the place to solder it down so now we'll solder down the uh, the outside metal shield to hold it on the board okay there's the <clears throat> the USB connector is soldered down now I guess you can see it in there but there's only the two pins the two edge pins are the only two that are connected the ones in the middle are not because we only need the power connected so that's done <clears throat> so moving on so it says to solder capacitors and AMS 1117 voltage regulator chips below the corresponding location so here are what goes where <clears throat> C1 is a 220 microfarad capacitor which is this one right here so C1 these are polarity sensitive goes in just like that it does have markings to show you which direction it goes to the black side obviously is the negative but it does have it does have an outline so the cap goes in like that and now we'll just tack this down I've still got my iron running at only 320, I think it's 320 degrees Celsius. So it takes a little longer. And uh, the C2 and C4 are the the, uh, the small ones there. They'll be marked uh, 104, I believe. Is this them there or is that resistors? That should be it there, I think. Where are they? you got to find these little tiny little parts. Those are resistors. What do we got here? These here are... 103 those are resistors anyway these are very small components I think the easiest way to probably get these to stick is to put a bit of solder onto the board itself on the lands just to make it a little easier to get them to uh, stick and all I have to do is heat it up So there's three capacitors. I'll put one of them back into its its holder. Not that I can do anything with it. It's never be able to keep that. It'll get lost. But they give you an extra one just in case, right? We'll just slide that sucker into place and just put some heat on there, and that should draw it onto the board like that. And do the same on the other side. Put a bit of heat on there. That one's in place. Now do the same thing for this other one. We'll just kind of push it into place. And just put a bit of heat on the board and it should suck that part into, into its location that it needs to go. It's ugly, but it's there. So that's the two chip capacitors now soldered. Next is the other electrolytic, which is the uh, 10 microfarad, which is C3. Again, C3 is polarity. Uh, that's a polarized cap, so it's polar polarity, polarity critical. If you put it in backwards, 
It might work for a while, but uh, it's guaranteed to fail. I hate these things. Of course, these packages are designed for automated assembly. So, let's see, thread up the machines. No one has to touch anything. They have people in the factory, and the only reason they're there is to load the machines. So, we'll mount C3. I've still got some rosin on my fingers here, so things are still a little bit sticky. I'm going to pick up the part and let it go, and it sticks to my fingers. Uh, let me help if I put it in the right way. Speaking of polarity, I can't like that. And uh, the last thing is the voltage regulator, the U2 regulator, which is an AMS 1117. Put that in there like that. And the tab. Just use up the remaining solder on the tab there. Okay, that's mounted. And I guess the next thing, let's flip the page over here. I'm just doing these in sequence that they suggested on the page. And um, <clears throat> we've got the. Uh, U1 and U3 are the next ones to go in. I'm going to uh, put the resistors, I think, in first. I guess I could put these ones in. U3 is uh, this one here. And there is a, a correct way to mount it. There's a dot on the IC in the corner right down there. Zoom this camera in just a bit. I know I've got shadows there. I can't do much about that. Okay, there's a there's a dot right up on the corner of the IC here. You line it up with the dot on the board and just line up the pins. Make sure that the pins are lined up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack down one corner first to make sure that my alignment is correct and then I can go and do the rest of them. For this, I'll bring in the fine gauge solder again. But I'm happy that my alignment is correct, and I'll tack the rest of them down.
and I think I'm going to put I'm going to put some flux on the board this time just to make these pins solder down a little easier. Because flex will minimize the risk of bridging. Even though I just bridged one here, I'll do the rest of it and I'll clear that one up in a minute. Actually, it looks like those pins are actually bridged together. Look at the uh, solder mask there. Okay, continuing, we'll get the second chip in. U1. U1's identified by a notch on the side that indicates where pin 1 is. Pin 1 is also has a dot on it. So that one goes in just like that. We'll line that up. Q1. And then it said, uh, what does it say here? R1 and 2 is the one mag resistor. So R1 and 2 are these ones over here. And uh, four, these ones are the, the 10K. So we'll start with the 10K resistors first because I'm just working my way towards me. So here's our 10K resistors, 3, 4, and 5. And our one mag resistor is uh, 1 and 2. And yes, these things are just incredibly small. Okay, that's those three ugly things mounted. Let's get the one make resistors mounted on this side. I'll tell you, if you drop one of these things, you're never finding it, ever. So now the moment of truth. Is it going to do anything when I plug the power in? Well, let's find out if it's going to do anything. Ha, 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 ha. It's doing something. I don't know whether it's... Let's see if it'll go through a self-test here. I may have some connections that I have to just redo, so I'm just going to see here because there may be a couple that aren't tacked down. Okay, after cleaning off the board, I under close inspection using my strong magnifying glass. I know it's hard to see with the shadow here, but uh, one of the connections on the IC here wasn't tacked down properly, so I've resoldered it. Let's uh, test it now and see whether it works. <clears throat> zero, zero, zero. There we go. 19 degrees. 1.01. One. be like January 1st. Saturday. Happy birthday. I think it's working. Now we can uh, put this thing in its case. 
because all the LEDs are now functional. I should test it and make sure that I can actually set the thing here. I don't know how to set it yet. i got to figure that out. There we go. Menu. Yep, the menus are working. Let's put it in its case and see how it looks once I get the cabinet installed. So, I got the different pieces here for the back. I'm just looking to see which pieces go where. This one's obviously, this one goes on the back because it's got the, it's got the space for the buzzer and stuff and the battery and the components to stick through. And I'm thinking there's probably another piece that I'm going to go out there and wring that person's neck if they don't stop blowing that goddamn horn. That piece would go on like that. Looks like we build these up. And then one more piece. I guess that piece goes on like that. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe that one goes on the front. Okay, I think that one goes on the front. And then this is going to go on like that. That separates the matrix. And <clears throat> I was looking at the... Uh, yeah, this other piece is going to go in front of... Oh, shut that goddamn horn up! Like... Please... Give it a rest. We'll peel this piece off. This is just protective. So, the matrix goes on like that. Now it looks like we've got a piece of diffusion paper that is going to go on. Oh, here we go. Uh, we're going to peel this off here. And it looks like this is going to stick over the front of this. This is, this is a sticky back. So we'll stick this on the front of the diffusion. We'll see how it looks. Okay, if I plug it in now, I may have to use the other one because this one, I think I kind of screwed this one up, but we'll just plug this power in and see how this looks through the diffusion plate. Ah, yes. See, it diffuses it to make the numbers nice and easy to read. Okay, I think what we'll do now is I'll show you guys how to set this thing. I don't have the backup battery in here at this point. So, it's going to start out at zero, zero, zero. And uh, how we set this thing is on the back, there are a menu key and an advanced key. So, it's all done by this way, got it upside down. It's all done by holding the menu key and touching the advanced key. So let's set this thing here. So the back, the menu key is the bottom one looking from the back and then the set key. So if I hold the menu key in, it'll come up and say time. If I want to adjust the time, I hit the menu key a second time and now I can set my hours by touching the advanced key. If I hold it, it'll go quickly. I'm in 24 hour time right now. I hit the menu key to move over to the minutes. Let's so set the time, it's 8.20, so which is 20, 20 hours. I believe it'll do 12 hours too, I just haven't found that in the menu yet. So we'll get it to 2020, and now it's set. 2020. If I want to change it again, it also displays the internal temperature. If I go to time, and I click the advanced key, now it says date. Hit the menu key, the date. It's March or it's May the seventh today. Oops, went too far. And it's basically just touch sensitive. There's no actual switch. It's just a little uh, copper trace that you tap, and it picks up capacitance. I'll go to menu again, time, oops, time, date, alarm, font, display, what does that one say? 
fought if it be right time date 2000 oh, I, I, I got the year wrong first I tapped it quickly it's what it is I have to hit, hit the uh, menu key time tap it once date there we go 2000 now we can go to 2017 And now I've got the date set. So now it will know what day it is today. So it's displaying the time in 24 hour time. 23 Celsius, that's the temperature inside here. It actually has, I guess, has a temperature sensor. May the 7th, Sunday. And it just displays the time and the date. Which is actually kind of cool. Now let's see what some of the other messages that we can do here. Time, date, that's be alarm. Uh, that was probably font. Try that one again and get back there. Time, no. Font. Brightness. Time. Date. Alarm. Font. Oh, there. See? You can change the type of font. You can use square or have the more normal looking ones. I kind of like that font. So now, that's how our numbers look now. So some of the other things we can do here, time, date, alarm, font, display. Probably display is going to change it. I missed it. Type 3, type 4, type 5, type 1. Okay. So you have different display types. So this one I'll just keep the time on and then it'll roll it over. So everything just crawls by. That's display type one. I'm gonna have to clean up the contacts. There's still a bit of rosin on the board, so it's kind of sticky and it's making my input a bit funny here. Go back here, we'll go back to time, date, alarm, font, display, type two. Let's see what type two looks like. So these are the different types of ways. So this way your digits just wipe in. Okay, we'll do that again. Time, alarm, font, display. Type three, here's the way type three, the numbers just roll in. Just like that. Go type four. Oops, missed it. Type four. We'll try the next one. I think it was there was five types, I believe. Display type five. It looks like type five just keeps the time on the screen all the time. It doesn't alternate. Time date alarm font display and what is this one? We'll see what that is. Okay, this changes your 
the marker. You see? So that's your mid point for your seconds counter. So now it does that. So you can change that as well. And is there any more? Format. 24 and 12. There you go. Now it's 12 hours. So that's how you set this thing up. So you can have it set up as 12 hours or 24 hours. Hey, I like it. This was a really fun project to build. It's a lot of very fine soldering, so it's not a kit for beginners. It's SMD, so you're going to need a good magnifying glass, and I would recommend, even if you don't need glasses, get some reading glasses to help with the fine work, or some of those big magnifiers that you can buy that you put the whole hood on and it makes everything look big because we're talking some relatively small connections here. It's very easy to bridge them over. And uh, even with paying attention and care, I got a, a few bridges I had to take care of, and I had a couple connections that didn't solder down right. So I went through and I double checked everything, went through it, double checked it once, got it working, got to like it. I'm giving two thumbs up for this thing here, and that's a plug for, uh, for Banggood. This is a nice little kit. Took me a couple of hours to put this thing together, and uh, but I think I will enjoy this for years to come. I have another one I'll be doing very soon, which is a propeller clock. And I've already got it here. I'll be working on that next week. And of course, by reversing the diffuser, it now has a white background, but uh, it makes the, it makes the uh, numbers quite legible on this thing. So you can put the you can put the diffuser on either way. Looks fantastic. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.